All right, Pastor Fires, here we are. Yes. So it's uh, just waiting for everybody to connect, waiting for <laughs> it, it. Just every time I think about it, it kind of makes me laugh. But waiting for this uh, other computer, which is our monitor, uh, to con uh, to catch up. And when it does, we'll go ahead and get started. Waiting for other people to uh, to come. Uh, come on. on uh, yes, Lord Jesus. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So you're tagged and just waiting for everything to catch up. It's getting there. Waiting for others to join in and for the people to find out that we're on. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hello. Hello. Hey, Mary, how you doing? <laughs> Calvin, how you doing? Good to see you. Brother Waters, we thank God for you. Thank God. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Waiting for a few more. Just waiting for my other computer over here. Doing fine. Uh, doing you you in our prayers. That, um, again, we you in our prayers uh, um, for the loss in our family, and we we know God is strengthening, and uh, you were certainly in our prayers, and we thank God. Her, her sister, matter of fact, um, I don't know if I knew her sister, but um, but we you certainly was in our prayers, and we, we thank God for you. And we know only God. We can say we we, we know some words that we would, we would like to say, but only the Spirit of God can bring the kind of comfort that helps yes. us in times. Yes. Of these kind of needs, but uh, uh, yes, I, yeah, I do now. I started looking up some stuff. <laughs> I hey, didn't at first, but I do. How you doing, Sister Lily? Yeah. Yes, uh, but I do now. Uh, but um, sometimes, as time goes on, your memory mm -hmm. gets kind of doesn't get lost, but it gets kind of stretched out because you know how you invest so much in. Uh, but I was such a quiet person in school that it, you know it's probably. I doubt not, that. Yeah, I was shy. I, I was don't kinda... think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Amen. Amen. Uh, Minister Issa, good to see yes. you. Yes. Yes, yes. But God is so good, Pastor Fox. We're good to be here. Uh, glad to be here, rather. Mm -hmm. Glad to be here again. Um, we, we thank God for uh, what it's going to see and what it's going to do tonight. Um, we, got some good, we got some good news, um, again, um, about some things that's coming up um, in February. Some things we, 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 we we're putting it together, but it's going to be good. And it's not just most of, most of the times when we uh, she said yes. <laughs> most of the times when uh, when they do things during uh, the season that they celebrate relationships, um, they just do things uh, for married couples. But we're going to do things for three tier relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to do things for newlyweds. We're going to do those things for those who've been married for a while. Excuse me, just for a second. Let me put this uh, monitor thing up. Those have been, excuse me, just for a second. Uh, uh, that's playing on me. Um, those who have been married uh, for, for a while. Um, and we're going to do things, uh, do something for, for singles. And and the things that we're doing for singles, uh, it's a it's a event that we're, gonna, that we're calling um, Are You Compatible? Yes, yes. And it helps you to um, to really understand what what's going to be expected and who the person you're marrying and I, it's just more details we're going to have but it's going to be an exciting event it's going to be a getaway um that we, we're going to we're going to do during that time it's going to be we're going to get some awesome prizes um, uh, for yeah how you doing truly um awesome prize oh that's just rules how you doing some awesome prizes for those um who uh, uh who win mm -hmm. but we'll give you more information but it's in, in february especially when we get you know as it as it plants unfold, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to give you more details. Uh, hopefully, um, uh, you know, everybody want to be a part of, of it and stuff and, and have a good time. Also, we, uh, we're going to get a copy of it and we'll bring it to you. We just republished a couple of, of our relationship books. Uh, it's been hard. It's been, it seemed like a wrestle. The enemy was wrestling with yes. getting those books out. Um, but um, uh, securing your relationship, securing the covenant of your relationships. And um, it's the one that, we're, that God told us first to publish and we didn't. Mm -hmm. Uh, we just took our, we just got a little dragging our feet on it, but we got it, and it's now in the review to be published. As soon as it get published, we'll be uh, putting it up and letting you know where you can go get it at. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So we thank God uh, for, how you know, our Joe, Brother Sproul, went to school with Joe too. Uh, so good to see you. But Pastor Far, it's a nice subject. I believe it's a, it's, it's a, it's an important subject mm -hmm. because it deals with uh, not just marital relationships, but relationships that are developing to understand what you're marrying. It's not just... Mm -hmm. You know, you can either, and we said this, we were talking about this before we got on to the program was that um, you can have a roommate yeah. and settle and think that's just yes. enough. But 
we if we're going to have a healthy marriage we always say that mm -hmm. we're going to have a healthy marriage if we're going to have have a healthy process towards marriage um amen certainly will um if we're going to have a healthy process uh towards marriage we've got to know uh what's in our life that's right and we've got to know got to know the identity of it yes you know it's not just another body just not just another person we got to know what the identity of exactly what it is that you bring to my life absolutely. and what do I bring to your life absolutely you know so that, that that's I'm excited absolutely. and it's a serious it's a, we can't get so excited uh, about uh, uh, wanting a relationship so hungry for a relationship mm -hmm. and so settled in our marital relationship mm -hmm. that we don't ever once about take an invitation uh, 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 a look at evaluation. Evaluation. Yeah. That's yeah. the one. Thank you, baby. And now you've evaluation of the quality of our relationship. Yes. And then determine whether this relationship is living up to what we expect from it. And most importantly, what God requires exactly. from us to be a healthy yeah. marital couple that He can use. Mm -hmm. And stuff. So, so we want to get into this pastor, if you don't mind, I'm going to get Okay. Uh, we must do more than spend time. Absolutely. That's true. That, 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 that title itself says, you know, tons. It says Absolutely. a lot. We've got to do more in relationship than just spend time. There's a big distinction between relationships that enjoy the company and benefits that the other person presents to them, which is purely called companionship. And we need to hear that now. Okay. Now, uh, now, notice the word came for purely or just companionship. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll hear us talk about in Malachi. Malachi talks about and it encourages companionship, but it doesn't stop there. Yes. And But the problem is, Pastor Flowers, Sometimes is... Sometimes it stops. Yes. yes. We have many marital relationships that have just stopped in companionship. Mm -hmm. They've learned how to entertain. They've learned how to put up with some mm -hmm. stuff. But they haven't learned that if you're going to go from just being a companion to being a spouse mm -hmm. and being someone in covenant... Uh, tone his own okay. uh, and stuff. You have to move from just being that companion and learn how to yeah. be a partner, learn how to be someone yeah. that deals with stuff to help help each other grow. And uh, so that's why this we believe uh, that this subject is most important. Yes. That we understand there's a distinction mm -hmm. in the growth of a relationship. Okay, huh? If, and a relationship that leads to a deep, intimate connection of mutual service. Now put question marks there. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by mutual service in a relationship? One of the things that we, we found out, Pastor Hunt, is that when you when you have a relationship based off pure of just pure companionship, mm -hmm. somebody always wants to be served. Mm -hmm. The other person isn't really isn't really sacrificing or doing what's necessary to help the relationship get to a place mm -hmm. that both are mutually benefited, mm -hmm. that mo both mutually benefit from. Some come to the relationship, and yes, they need the help of the other person. But the problem is when they come in just off of companionship, mm -hmm. they many times take their time growing from that point. Mm -hmm. And they always want some kind of service from the other person when they're not really doing what they need to do because, after all, you're my wife. After all, you're my mm -hmm. husband. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to do these things. You're supposed to help me with those things. But there's some things that, so yes. It's just duty stuff. It's just, it's just duty uh -huh. stuff. But when, when it moves from just companionship to intimate relationship, to emotionally respond to people taking emotional responsibility, we both, we both, Take the steps of sacrifice that's necessary to help everybody grow. Yes. I, I, you know, I don't want you, if I come in and I don't understand what I need to do to be the best husband mm -hmm. that I need to be, you can help me mm -hmm. to get to that place by telling me what a woman and a wife expects mm -hmm. from a healthy husband. Well, I don't ask you to keep doing that. Mm -hmm. For instance, you remember when I hurt my back some years back? Yes. Mm -hmm. At one time... Uh, you know, I, it took me to get to a place where I had balanced walking and mm -hmm. I, I could walk strongly and I could go and take care of stuff that I need to take care of. Well, until that time came, you would bring my plate. Oh, yeah. And you would set my tray in front oh, of yeah. me. You would fix my plate. You would yes. help me do certain yes. things and stuff that I couldn't do at that time until I got strong enough to do them on my own. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, after I got strong enough to do them on, on my own, I didn't expect you to do that for me anymore. I expect to take to be able to grow from what you gave me time to get healthy enough to do. Mm -hmm. But if I stay at that, and I still require you to bring me uh, my plate, still require you to bring me my tray, still require you to do the same things that you did mm -hmm. when I couldn't do them, mm -hmm. then that's that's ju that's just staying purely at the companionship and not growing to an intimate relationship. Well, I start to take responsibilities, what I need to do, so you can start to give some relief, and then you can start doing what you need to do for yourself to bring yourself to a healthy uh, place in the relationship. And that's, that's a question that I had, too. What about relationships that are sort of like one-sided in that area? where one person do mostly all the serving. Mm -hmm. But when they come to the point, let's say they do 80% of the serving, I'm doing this for you, I'm doing that for you, I'm washing your clothes, I'm, you know, I'm bringing your food, I'm cooking your food, I'm, 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 I'm rubbing your, 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 your head, or, you know, doing mm -hmm. all, every, doing your running around, mm -hmm. you know, making phone calls. But when I have a need to do, you're too busy. 
And, and that's a, that's a problem when it stays purely. So it's unbalanced. Pure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's a problem when a relationship stays purely companionship. It will make a servant slave out of the person that they're married to. Wow. You know, companionship is good. It, it's good as a foundation and part of a healthy, whole, covenant relationship. Mm -hmm. But it cannot stay there because if it stays as companionship, sometimes it's not as connected as need to be. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it goes off of just duty only. It's mm -hmm. not anything where someone will realize that, you know, yes, uh, uh, some they may have taught us in 1969. In the 60s, that women's job was to wash dishes. Mm -hmm. But we understand that when we're in a covenant relationship, she may not have time to wash dishes because she may be working to help the house to be financially whole as well. So there's nothing wrong with my hand. Why can't I wash dishes? That's right. You know, why can't I do the things that, that both of us can be healthy and, 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 and whole about in a relationship? And one of the things that we always said, and, and this is a for, for grown married people, um, a man or woman will wear each other out and physical duties for the house and then expect the intimacy to be full of joy and strength. Mm -hmm. Well, if you wear them out in duties that you could do, mm -hmm. don't get mad when they're too tired for things you want them to do. Exactly. And that's what companionship, yeah. that's only, com when it's only stuck in companionship, Pastor Flowers, it's somebody that's going to be so wore out that there's nothing left mm -hmm. to be ministered to or to minister to. Yeah. And stuff. So you have to be, you have to know the difference between, all right, huh? Okay. Now, go back up here, which is called purely companionship and versus a relationship that lead to a deep, intimate connection of mutual service, mutual sacrifice, and pur purposeful interest that builds the covenant marital relationship. In this relationship, they seek to discover and enjoy more than physical company and benefits of one another. Absolutely. Let's, I'm going to say hello to uh, Jada and uh, Jeremiah Flowers. Uh, that's Donnie's. My, my, my nephew, okay. that's his his children okay. and stuff. So we say hello right back to you. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us, Jessica. Amen. But Pastor Flower, sometimes what happens when they don't move when they don't when they don't move from um, just being a companion mm -hmm. and move to the part where it's, where, where it's intimate and it's connected and people are growing mm -hmm. and they're taking responsibilities to what they need to do in a relationship. They never go past just enjoying each other's company. Exactly. Which means in a dating relationship, if you ask too many questions. Or if you stay too long because there's something else they want to do, they get irritated. Yeah. If you if you're in a in a marital relationship and you haven't gone beyond companionship and you just enjoy the company, but you don't enjoy what it takes to make sure everybody's as beneficial in the relationship, you don't want to ask any questions. Exactly. You don't want to go into anything deep because you're just companions and companions are just friends. Mm -hmm. Don't really ask any deep questions. And then friends understand that when you don't want to talk, but you don't want to answer anything, you don't press them. That's what friends realize. Mm -hmm. Friends learn how to back off. And friends don't press any questions because you, after all, you're just friends. And that's what companions, when relationships stays to companions, that's what they do. When I tell you I don't want to talk, when I tell you I don't want any questions, when I tell you I don't answer as much as I want to answer, as a companion, when it stays there as a, as a companion, you don't press me anymore. And, 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 and you only accompany me Absolutely. when I make room for you. Absolutely. And I don't that's want good. to accompany yes. you when you make room for me. Absolutely. If, if, if you don't make room for me or I don't make room for you, then you're trespassing. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. I have not invited you into my company, so to speak. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and because many relationships have settled in the companionship role, even what we were talking about on the week before last when I said there are some people that have given a free pass to some people, yeah. whether it be a gender yeah. gender thing, to not talk. My, yeah. my husband don't talk or my wife won't talk, whoever it may be. Most times it's the man that they've given a free pass to mm -hmm. that won't relate his feelings and stuff. And they give him a free pass. We don't understand that many times this is defining a relationship as a companion only relationship. Mm -hmm. So that means if I haven't, if I don't want to invite you in, you've accepted that as an acceptable behavior. Okay. So after that's a while, when you, he is, yes. you know, uh, he don't want to talk right now. And that's how he is, and so forth. So you know. And then after a while, uh huh? Mm -hmm. When you realize, wait a minute, I can't survive when I, if I let him have this free exactly. pass to not talk to me. Now too late. You don't set the rule for so long. That's it. They settled in it. You were settled in it, and now they think you're acting funny because you no longer can accept mm -hmm. it. Well, I mean. You still should accept it, but you still now have to work doubly hard because of the time ta table that you've allowed this thing to go on for. Yes. I, and again, I'm not saying you should accept it just because in the past you, you accepted it or you allowed it to stay at a companionship level. But now that you realize I can't survive after this, you need to let them know. Yes, I, I yes, I did give you permission in the past because I thought this was okay. 
I thought this was a norm. Mm -hmm. I thought this would be acceptable for a relationship. But I realized if the relationship is going to be acceptable, it has to be for both of us, yeah. not just you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. In a companion only, accompanying relationship, romantic tactics does not enter either person, interest either person, but is a close friendship that is built on trust and both people enjoy spending their time together. The, that was somebody's definition of that. Yes, there was somebody's definition. What they were actually saying was, in a companion-based only relationship, um, intimacy doesn't, doesn't, really, doesn't really make any difference to them. All they want is somebody there to make them look good, somebody to share some time with somebody. And as we go along, you hear a statement where we say, all they want is somebody to occupy their time. Oh, yeah. Just to occupy their time. They don't want anything anything deep. They don't want anything emotional. They don't want anything that draws anything from them. They don't want anything that demands anything emotionally from them. And so one of the words you're going to hear us use is, and these are the kind of people you have to un you have to know that you're getting in contact with if they're called emotional hitchhikers. Yes. Lord. And we'll talk more about that as we go along. But I'm just I don't want to get get it go ahead of ourselves. But you're going to hear this word again. Yes. And th there are so many of these kind of people yes. in the yes. developing yes. relationship. Yes. yes. And in marital relationships. And you need to know when you have emotional hitchhiker because that may be the answer to why some of the things are you just. You think you got one thing in actuality? You have an emotional hitchhiker. Absolutely. Who Absolutely. is taking a ride with you at your expense? Under the disguise of being real. But here's the key thing, Pastor Fires. We don't want to get too ahead of ourselves. Okay. They may be riding at your expense, mm -hmm. but they're only going to go as far as they want to go. Exactly. They're not going to exactly. go any further. But they're not going to pay any tolls. Oh, they're not going to pay any tolls. No, hitchhikers, mm -hmm. when you come, listen, you pick them up and stuff, and, and somehow they have neglected to understand they only picked you up because you on the side of the road asking for a ride. Mm -hmm. But they will neglect that and stuff and just lay the responsibility on the fact that you picked them up. Yes. And stuff. So they have they have nothing they have nothing that they have to take responsibility for, and and you know in reference to that they were on the on the side of the road needing a ride, but the fact is or the or, or the power of their argument is mm -hmm. that you stop, mm -hmm. you, you picked them up, you gave them a ride. That's it. And stuff. So all right. And now. it's your car. Yes. So you got to put all the gas in the car. Absolutely. And you got to pay the tolls while they're riding. And you were going that way anyway. And you were going that way anyway. Yes. So they don't feel responsible nope. to do anything else. Nope. Okay. So often couples press to find the benefits from the promises of God. Am I skipping something? No. no. So often couples press to find the benefits from, from the promises of God that the other person and or brings to them when they're invited or found to come into their life. But the fact is that if you do not love, honor, and nurture who they are that, rep that represents that promise from God, you will not receive a walk in that promise. Now understand here. So, and we're going to give a scripture. Of, okay. yeah, go ahead, baby. What are you going to say? On the basis of the scripture that you're talking about here mm -hmm. is, is Proverbs 18 and 22. In the Amplified, it says, He who finds a true wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Another version says, Whosoever hath found a wife hath found good and bringeth out goodwill from Jehovah. Now, here, here's a problem here, Pastor Flowers, that. Uh, when you deal with these kind of relationships, there's no, there's no real distinction on what your guide is, is that uh, you have people, and, and it goes right into the same mode of the hitchhikers, you have people that get into a relationship, and the understanding that the person that they're in a relationship with has some kind of benefits they right, can bring. Right. You know, there's a husband that, that may marry a wife, and he knows she's a prayer warrior, so when he gets in trouble, although he may not have a relationship with the Lord, and it could be vice versa, they're not worried about it because he can always hand prayer over to them, right, and right. they'll pray them through. There are, pe there are people who understand the Bible well, and they understand that when they find a wife, they find a good thing, and they obtain favor from the Lord. But the only problem is, Pastor Flowers, is is if I find you as a good thing and I ruin you, I can't get that promise wow, from God. That's true. And that's what we miss it up so many that's times true. is we're asking, we're trying to get on this ride, and we're trying to pull a thing from God and asking God to do certain things for us and stuff. And the problem is that God's only go, God's only going to give us off of what we offer Him if we keep that offering in the state that He gave yeah. it to us, or how we should promote it. And bring it back to you. Yes. That's and something happened. I think, yeah, there we go. We're back okay. on. All right, huh? Okay. Um, marital, couples, marital couples often miss out on the seasons and the benefits of what a good wife and a considerate husband the, yeah. attracts to the life of their spouse because they often don't fulfill what they promised in their vows and what God requires from them towards their spouses. You can find a good thing. Celebrate that you have found that good thing. And then treat it miserably and without consideration, just saying 
you know, just staying in a relationship mm -hmm. just for the promised benefit, but not in a real honest covenant position. And then they will ask God to bless and promote you, promote them because of the favor that God promised when you found them. Amen. Let's, let's stop here because let's, let's, let's preface this because this came up a question yes. that the Lord posed to you. And yes. that is, why is it that many people are not successful in yes. marriage? Mm -hmm. What is holding men up? What is holding women up from being successful in their marriage? And such a base off the fact is that Pastor Flowers, the, the scriptures tells me, and going back to what Proverbs said, that when I find a wife, I find a good thing, and then I obtain favor from the Lord. Okay, why can't I use you then to obtain that kind of favor, obtain the favorable attention of God when I found this good thing? Now, I, I can't say that what I found wasn't good. Mm -hmm. So if it's not what I found wasn't good, What's going on then with the exchange? You know, I think, oh, Ryan joined. Amen. Uh, you know, I think that uh, that's our grandson. Y'all, we're so proud yes. of him. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's awesome. Anyway, um, we, 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 I think the problem is when we, we, we read that scripture and understand that, you know, there's a favor from God. You know, you, you found a good wife, mm -hmm. you know, and you obtain favor from God. I think we think that's automatic without us having to do anything. Absolutely. I think like I was saying to you sometime when we look at it and we have to come to the understanding to treat that good thing that God said it is like it is good. a good thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. We can't take what God has called a good thing and treat it miserably. Absolutely. And, and think we're going to receive the favor from God. Absolutely. And we're asking God for, for favor and God is literally saying, well, favor your spouse. Absolutely. Show some, so show some consideration for your spouse. But well, we want a lot of consideration from God, but we don't have consideration for one another. And then look to receive this type of favor from God. Absolutely. Well, well let's, let's look at this, what the Lord said, and in and, and the same reference as a gift, when we look what he said in the Gospels. When he came out and he gave the example of the, of the man going off to a far country, and he gave gifts to men. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, and one of the ones we want to emphasize on is the, is the, is the one he gave. The one given to and did nothing with it. Right. And when the right. Lord and when the Lord came back, the Lord asked him and said, said after everybody else had brought increase, after everybody else had did something to promote it, to benefit it, mm -hmm. to benefit the Lord in it mm -hmm. and stuff as well. Came back and stuff. He asked him, he said, um, he asked him, okay, come on, make a report. Mm -hmm. And he came back gleefully. He said, just like we do, we find a wife or you have a husband and stuff. He said, okay, God, I got an awesome covering. I got an awesome wife now. Yes. You give me favor. And the Lord asked you, okay, what have you done to it? To benefit it or to benefit me in it. And we said, nothing. I just treat him as a wife. Well, you don't treat him just as a, or as a, as a partner or as a, you know, as, no, you don't just treat him as that. You treat him as a covenant person. Mm -hmm. You respect what God has put in their life. You help promote one another towards the things. Well, get back to the, that example of, of that, of that, of the gifts. He, he said, look, Lord, he said, I got your gift just as you gave it to me. Yep. And I hid it in my flesh yeah. to make sure nothing else would have an impact or an influence yeah. on it. And I looked at him and rebuked him and called him a wicked servant. Why? Mm -hmm. Because what God give him, gave him, he did nothing yeah. to promote it, to bless it, to yeah. increase and to glorify yeah. God. Yeah. And unfortunately, there's a lot of marriages like that. Absolutely. One or the other does nothing to promote or increase the other. What? Come on, I'm listening. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> They do nothing to increase the other. You right. know, it, it, it's, it's all about, you know, them, them, them. I, 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 me, me, me. And they do nothing to increase or Absolutely. encourage or motivate the other one. Absolutely. Matter of fact, there's sometimes in some marriages, there is a competition. Yes. And there is jealousy. Absolutely. And there is, you know, where they put, sneakily put mm -hmm. stumbling blocks or hope the other one don't succeed. And sometimes I think to myself, you know, why would you hope that your spouse don't succeed? When it, you know, is a bad reflection on you. Ooh, and yes. sometimes people feel like, well, if they succeed, that means I have failed. Mm. You know, and, 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 and that's, that's not too, how it is. No. No. All right, huh? Okay. Um, this goes both ways. How you treat your spouse will determine what you can claim from God. Absolutely. Because of them. Or how you handle them and what you can claim from God as a child of God as well. Absolutely. First Peter. First Peter three seven through nine and amplifies that in the same way you married men should be con live considerately with your wives with the intelligent recognition of the marriage relationship, honoring the woman as physically the weaker, but realizing that you are joint heirs of the grace, God's unmerited favor of life 
in order that your prayers may not be hindered and cut off. Otherwise, you cannot pray effectively. Amen. Finally, all of you should be of one and of the same mind, united in spirit, sympathizing with one another, loving each other as brothering of one household, compassionate and courteous, tender-hearted and humble. Now let me say this, just in case some would say or miss the fact that um, that the Lord first was dealing with explicitly relationships. Mm -hmm. Then he spread his borders and stuff. He started talking about the church. But by no means is he excluding the behavior between a husband and wife. Right, when right, he's right. talking to first eight, that sounds like he's talking exclusively mm -hmm. to the church. He's not talking exclusively to the church. He's including the marriages that hear this message as well. Yes. That's in the church. And stuff. And we do this because nobody's excluded or excluded from the responsibility to take responsibility for how they handle their marriage and how they handle the person mm -hmm. that they're married to. We're both are equally responsible to make sure that we're doing what's best, not just for the marital relationship, but for each other in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. Never return evil for evil or insult for insult, scolding, tongue lashing, berating, but on the contrary, blessing, praying for their welfare, happiness and protection, and truly, truly pitying and loving them. For know that to this you have been called, that you yourself, that you may yourselves inherit a blessing from God, that you may obtain a blessing as heirs, bringing welfare and happiness and protection. How we treat one another and how we define this relationship will determine what we get from God. So it's not just a gimme because you find a good wife if you're not being good to her. It's not a give me just because you uh, you let a good husband or a good man find you. That it's a give me that you're going to get all the, all the promises and all the covering that's necessary from that husband if you're not allowing yourself mm -hmm. to submit to that husband. And if that husband is not doing to his wife that God requires for him to treat his wife by. You know, it, as a wife, it's, it's hard to receive everything from God that you need to receive, especially when you are rebellious. Absolutely. And can I say that? And makes it hard for your husband to cover you. Absolutely. You know. Um, there are some wives that, that, that are, makes it pretty hard for him to cover you, you know, as well as husbands who refuse to cover. Absolutely. Who Absolutely. just want to, you know, you just serve me, you're my slave, so to speak. I've married you, and so now do your duty as a wife, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, and really drive that female. Absolutely. To work, to know yes. not when. Absolutely. And, and it's, it's y'all, it, it's, it's tough to carry out your responsibility. When both both people in a relationship is on different pages, yes. When they when one is trying to redefine uh, how the other should act in a relationship, when there's a there's a platform, there's a there's a template for how we should mm -hmm. treat each other. The relationship is in the Word of God. Mm -hmm. When we follow that template and and we let the Holy Spirit lead us, relationships can be more healthier. Mm -hmm. But we first we first when people when, when we're trying to define this relationship and we don't know where it's coming or where it's falling in reference mm -hmm. to the template of, of, of scriptures, then we need to sit back and find out you know realize what's in this relationship. Mm -hmm. What is this person that I'm, that I'm dating? What is this person that I'm married to? What are they what are they defining towards me and how they act towards me? What does this say about a relationship? Mm -hmm. and most importantly, what does this say about what God can do for us? in our relationship mm -hmm. and so when you work at those things you look at those things and you're honest about them and that's the key thing you need to be honest and real if you're dating someone and and and, and I, I want to be real about this if you're dating someone and you're not seeing all the qualities that's necessary to bring them before god in a union and a commitment you need to run from them yes you don't need yes. to close your eyes and pretend like listen be real about it yeah as long as the relationship goes this person will change no mm -hmm. this person may actually be and I got to hit this word again. They may actually be an emotional hitchhiker, and this emotional hitchhiker is not going to go where you want to go. They have a they have a design, and they have a they have a length that they're going to go. Enjoyed. All right, they have a length that they want to go. Yes. yes. Hey, Jaden, good to see you, buddy. Mm -hmm. They have a they have a distance, that emotional distance that they want to go, and after that emotional distance is finished, they're going to jump off. Yes. And stuff. So let's jump down in that area, Pastor. Let's move move down a little bit because we keep talking about that area, so we might as well. Okay. Go ahead and hit that area if we can, please. Okay. Amen. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free. We'll 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 see them. We we can we we can see them pretty good. We can see them on this main screen, and we can see it on this one we're monitoring stuff with. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, we must move from being just companions only to where we are not only connected to a deeper design, but we are answerable and accountable to that design in. And for each other, we don't want a we don't want just a cook, a sex partner, a bookkeeper, a provider, or someone that makes us look good, feel good, and entertains us away from our struggles. We must make every effort to connect with each other at the real levels, so that God is pleased with the investments that we're making 
with and into each other. Again, we don't want, and singles and married people, you cannot, if you want your relationship to go beyond the stage of introduction, you cannot settle for the for a person in your life that's just an entertainer or a distraction. And I don't mean a bad distraction. I mean they, they entertain you enough, you don't you forget about your function your dysfunctions, you forget about all the things that hurt you, you forget about that you were lonely. Although there's no definition of relationship that will be a that will be a, 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 a real cure to being lonely, at least it distracts you from the fact of being lonely. You don't want just somebody that's going to be a, you don't want a menstrual show. You don't want an emotional menstrual show. You want a real covenant. You want somebody that can live up to all the things that God uh, wants from them to be, a, be a, a, a healthy spouse to you, and you want them to be able to follow what the word says that they need to do towards you. You know, again, you don't want you don't want just a sex party. You don't want yeah. just somebody that can take you to the movies. You don't want somebody that just can entertain you. You got good friends that can do that, mm -hmm. but you don't want to put somebody in a place where only good friends do, and you try to build a relationship off of it. Yes. Okay. Yes. In this season of change and development, we're going to find ourselves needing to have to do a reevaluation of almost every connection we have in our relationship. Now hold up. I want you to say it again because I want you pay, I want us to hear this real good. Okay, if we do it again, huh? In this season of change and development, we are going to have to find ourselves needing to have to do a reevaluation of almost every connection we have in our relationships with family members, with some friends, and most importantly, how these connections either connect into or distract away from a healthy relationship with God and with them. Again, that's important. Absolutely. Was you going to say something? On no, I, what I was looking at was you can't just say, "Well, I have a relationship with me," but it got to right. be a healthy relationship with you and with the call of God and purpose Absolutely. of God in your life. We we can get so relaxed, and I can't say this enough. We can get so relaxed over time in relationships that we won't even notice that sometimes our emotional connections are eroding. Sometimes we can get so comfortable and so bogged down with the process of preparing for a wedding, we don't even we may not even realize that the person you're getting ready to get married to has stopped paying attention. Yes. So every once in a while, and most importantly, before you go to the altar, you need to sit down and discover the power of your connection and find out if this connection, same level. Yes, yes, if it's on the same level, if it's empowering that encourages your relationship, not just with them, but with God, or is it a distraction? Have you, have you missed some steps that, but, but that can show you that this relationship, if going forward, can be a distraction. Every relationship in this season, I don't care who it is, between your uncles, your cousins, your niece, your brothers, your sisters, your husbands, your wives, and stuff, you need to sit down and do, a, do an evaluation how this relationship is connected. And if it's become a distraction, or if I just settle and not realize that some things are now missing. I like this statement okay. we're going to make now. It says, intimate relationships have to be found to be honestly based and always witnessing that there is a real relationship going on. There is a lot yes, of people it. that are in something mm -hmm. that they think is a real relationship mm -hmm. when the other person know it's not a real relationship. Absolutely. Know that they're, e they're either just spending time, wasting time, or just, as they say, just kicking it. Absolutely. Now, here's a key thing, Pastor Flash, because you just brought some things in my mind when you were talking. And he, and this makes, and when you look at it, it kind of breaks your heart makes you sad. Because, but you can, we can get over it if we follow the process that God gives us. There are a lot of murder couples out there, Pastor Flowers, yeah. that are no longer in relationship. They're no longer in relationship. And you may say, wait a minute. What do you mean they're no longer in relationship? They're married and they're, 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 they're living in the same house and everything. But you forget the first part of relationship. And the first part of relationship is relate. If there's no connective communication, and there's no clarity shared, no understanding given, and there is no there's no uh, responsibility taken, where you where you where you, you know where, where you're giving in and you're and you're being accountable to what's necessary to make the relationship healthy, there's no relating. Relating means to just what you're doing is you're letting you're letting them in after giving them a platform to come in. You're uncovering stuff. You're talking to them. You're sharing things. You're being shared. And so when those things stop, there's no relating. Yeah. When they can't understand where you're coming from or what you want to go to, when you can keep secrets of, of struggles and issues yes. and bondages, be bitter and angry and never share it with them, when you can lose track of your emotional growth and what's really going on in the relationship because nobody's not sharing it, there's no relating. Yeah. And when there's no relating, there is no relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Because relationship needs, needs communication. Yeah. It needs some connectivity. Go ahead. You know, and also to be the in love, you mm -hmm. know, because that suffers a lot in, in marriages. You know, they, they, they love each other, but then you ask, well, are you in right. love? Are you 
do you have that deep, intimate feeling for one another? Help me with that, because I, I, I like that word. But share me, share me, explain, just talk to me. Because see, there's, there are people out there that say that and they use that word kind of lightly. I love you, but I'm not in love with you. What do you, what do you, what, what do you mean by that? I love what you present to my life. Mm -hmm. I love what you, I don't love you, you know, the, how you make me feel. Mm -hmm. I love all what I can get from you. Mm -hmm. But am I in love with you? Right. The the part of you that I can be emotionally connected to. The part right. of you that that makes me sometimes so happy that I want to cry. The part of you that 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 makes me feel like I want to connect even deeper. The part of you that makes me feel like you know. We're one. Right. That in love feeling will bring you to that oneness of feeling. Right. You know. Absolutely. But there but are some people that say, I love them, but I'm not in love with them. Right. Or I love them. Or I have love for them. Right. You know, that type of love is not going to make it, especially in hard times. Right. Now, I want to go back to something because you said something. I want to just, you said uh, that you feel so much in love with them, it makes you want to cry. Is that, is that how'd you say that? Come on, man. That's what I said. Yeah. Crying. Let me see. <laughs> well, come on. Let me see. You cry. <laughs> you said it. I don't mean okay. You. Okay. Okay. I was just, you know, explaining right, I understand, how. I understand. <laughs> okay. Intimate collection. Intimate connections have to be found to be. Oh, we went over that. Yes. We're going to have to be going. We are going to have to do this for our heart's sake. And in order to stay free. Absolutely. That, and I like that part because sometimes when you find out that you were in love and they were just plain had love for you, mm -hmm. it can hurt your feelings. And, they, and, and it will cause much more. Right. And if they were not really that connected or they've, they've allowed some, some things to be sifted mm -hmm. and stuff. And you're working hard to bring them close to you mm -hmm. and stuff only to realize that one wheels off their emotions. And yeah. you can't bring them close uh, if you're, uh, uh, unless you drag them. And then by the time you bring them, you're so exhausted you can't even realize if they're close to you or not. And stuff. So that's why it's you good. You're excited about it. Absolutely. And, you know, every now and then you see a little red flag to think, wait a minute. Something's um, missing. How you. can he say that to me? How can she say that? I would never say that to them. I would never treat them like this. Something inside mm -hmm. of me won't let me treat Absolutely. them like that. Something Absolutely. inside of me won't let me react to them. How come they can react that way to me? But how no. come they can, they can feel that way, you know, can react that way to me? And how can they... Uh, uh, do these things and how can they do? I would have never done that then there's an unbalancing there absolutely and, and that's why it's good before it gets to a place where it breaks something down to sit down that's why we encourage you and this is not just a a, a, a message or, or teaching because we're on top of empowerment mm -hmm. because I believe Pastor Flowers that there are two or three things and I said this um, in the rock revival before last day we had that this is going to be a season where God is going to uh, encourage and empower awesome relationships. He's going to use them awesomely. Yes. I believe some people who've been waiting for a while, and I'm not just saying this because we're here, some people who've been waiting for, for the Boaz or mm -hmm. been waiting for the Sarah and stuff, God is going to, God's going to create in this season, but here's the thing he needs to do. First of all, and, and please don't misunderstand me, first he wants you to be honest with yourself because if you can't be honest with yourself, you can't be honest about yourself. If you can't be honest about yourself, nobody can honestly connect with you. And that means sometimes in this, if you're going to check all your connections, first check the one, I'm talking to singles first, check the one with yourself. Make sure you're treating yourself well enough for somebody to appreciate how you bring, bring yourself to them. Because if you're not treating yourself well in this season, nobody's going to appreciate you, you bring to them because nobody wants something that you didn't tore up. Yeah. So make sure you're doing well by yourself and make sure you're treating yourself well yeah. so that when God presents you to the person that's told to find you, they can find you with, with pieces that they can work with, not pieces they have to go around find because they're invested in the other areas of hurt and fracture and brokenness and fear, mistrust and all those other things. So first, check it with yourself. And for couples, go back and evaluate all the things that have been a distraction throughout this year with your relationship. And that includes yourself. And don't lie to yourself. Don't lie that you have, that you were not distracted. Don't lie and say that there was sometimes you felt like, if, if it was, there sometimes you felt like walking out, that you weren't really emotionally listening. Not just listening. You weren't just not physically listening, mm -hmm. you weren't emotionally listening either. Exactly. either. And you weren't emotionally paying attention. And, and, go ahead, babe. And dig out that in loveness. Absolutely. Sometimes the in love feeling is buried under many issues, many things that were said, many things that was done. You know, dig out the uh, in loveness and fall back in love again. Absolutely. You know? 
Absolutely. And work in it. But, you know, don't just pile on something. Don't just say, you know, there are some issues or some situations that's happened in your relationship and that has, that has kind of made you look a little differently at your spouse. Don't just bury love. Well, I love him anyway. Well, deal with why you have to say anyway. And that's the key thing. Yeah. Deal with why you have to say yeah. anyway. You know, if deal no, with the, nobody wants you to stay with them. Absolutely. Except because it's the right thing to do. Right. Stay with me because you're in love with absolutely. me. Absolutely. You know, uh, 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 call me your wife because... That's how you feel. Absolutely. I'm your wife, you know. Absolutely. That you're in love with me, you know. I'm, a, I'm fighting for my marriage, not because I'm a Christian. I'm fighting for my marriage because I love the person that I'm married yeah, to. I am absolutely. a Christian, but I'm fighting for my marriage because I'm in love. I'm still in love with the person that I'm married to. Mm -hmm. If I just say, if I just say I'm fighting for my marriage because I'm a Christian, then when you feel like backsliding, you're gonna backslide mm -hmm. on your marriage too. Mm -hmm. When things are not going exactly. right, when God is not answering any prayers, exactly. seem like when seem like God's not answering any prayers, things are not going right. Something happens in your church and stuff, and you want to blame everybody that's a Christian. All of a sudden, your marriage will be no good anyway. Because mm -hmm. while you're there, it's not because you love them or because you're working on your love with them. It's because uh, you're a Christian, and you feel it's the right thing to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. And if I treat my spouse right, then God will do everything in, that I'm asking them to do. Mm -hmm. And then when God don't do everything that you're asking them to do, then you don't treat your spouse right. Right. Right, so it's you know, it's about being honest and being real. All right, hon. In this season, we're going to have to be faced with answering all three of the following questions. Number one, who is with me? Are Absolutely. you really with me? Absolutely. And who is it that is that is here? Now I know somebody may come up, and maybe uh, you know, maybe Anthony that says is with you. But what condition or shape is Anthony in? Mm -hmm. Is he is he uh, is he here because uh, what God promised him? Through you, or is he here? Or what God told him that's supposed to be be to be, be between the two of you. Mm -hmm. So you got to know who, who's this with you. You don't want you don't want to, you don't want a, a, a emotional hitchhiker, and you don't exactly. want a bow evil. Oh my God, you don't want a bow evil because a bow evil is doing nothing else but looking for a home. And Absolutely. you don't want you know you hear a lot of people talk about they want their boaz and mm -hmm. end up getting a bozo. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between a boaz and a bozo. Now bozo have you laughing. Bozo oh have boy, you will enjoy the time. They'll oh take you to. They'll take you to. Uh, and uh, for a minute, you might think he's a bo boy. Yes. When in actuality, when it all said and done, and the curtain is pulled back, he's a bozo. Absolutely. Boaz will. I mean, the bozo will have you laughing. He'll take you to parks. He'll take you to dinner, and you'll just be laughing, and your heart will feel merry and joyful. And you marry that bozo, and that bozo will take nothing seriously. Mm -hmm. You will. You will try to pressure that bozo and to take responsibility yes. as a serious matter in your home. And the only thing they want to do is escape, run away, and have fun. Yes. There will be other places exactly. getting drunk. No there will be other places playing basketball. There will be other places doing other no things. Help. No help. It's like uh, dragging a bag of bricks up a hill. Yes. Yes. Okay. Huh? Um, Second. who is with me? Number two, who is accompanying me? Mm -hmm. And number three, who is my accomplice? Absolutely. Who's a, who's a, who's the one that's with me? Who's the one that, that's with wa me. walking with me through mm -hmm. this? And who is the one that's going to help me finish this project? Yes. Do I have someone that's going to help me finish out this plan that God has designed for my life? Yes, that God has planned at, at, at stuff for me as an individual and us as a corporate partner in this relationship and stuff. I want to know who's going to be my accomplice. Mm -hmm. All right, honey. Hearts have been broken and trusts have been violated because we put too much stock in the wrong people. In order to break this cycle, it is time to reevaluate. Absolutely. When we're trying to walk into or in a healthy relationship, we have to and should know who is actually in what position in our world. That's it. That's the key. You got to know that the person that you're in a relationship with, whether it's a developing single relationship and stuff or a marital and, and a marital relationship or both you need to know what position they're taking or what play in your in your marital relationship you don't want listen you don't want to uh, uh, go through a year or so of dating someone and only realize that the part they like is the dating that's all they like the dating yeah they don't like the responsibility of building a family take responsibility for uh, what it takes to uh, make sure we're on the same one accord and that we're building one another in a healthy way emotionally they don't like that part. They like the dating part, the discovery part. Mm -hmm. After, they don't like taking care of what they discover. Mm -hmm. They just like the discovery part. And you need to know that. And that sometimes goes what we said in earlier. Sometimes you just sit, just sit down, mm -hmm. have an honest, serious talk to exactly. find out, okay, what do you see us? What do you see yes. us Yes, yes, absolutely. You know? And then another thing, too, sometimes you don't have to have that talk. You need to just sit down and evaluate with what has been. Absolutely. Mainly talking to singles. Mm -hmm. If they're always hurting you, if it's always an issue of something that's coming up, you need to take a step back. Absolutely. Because that's not love. 
The Bible says that love worketh no ill to the neighbor. Absolutely. If this person can constantly work ill, constantly hurt you, constantly disappoint you, constantly have to apologize over the same thing over and over and over again, you're constantly finding them with uh, somebody else or uh, finding him with somebody else mm -hmm. or her with somebody else, you have to take a step back because if you marry that, then you Absolutely. only uh, condone that. Absolutely. Well, if I marry them, they're going to change. Who said that? Absolutely. You, you don't want to marry somebody that you have to make plans for counseling before you get married. Exactly. You, know, you have premarital well, counseling. Counsel on standby. Yes. Yeah. You, you want to get premarital counseling. I, I, I encourage everybody. One of, listen, one of the greatest lies the devil will tell you is, is that you can talk to each other enough about stuff that you want to hide, and you'll be honest enough about it and stuff to deal with it so you don't have to worry about nothing after you get married. We'll talk about the things that makes us comfortable. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the things that we feel is, is is discoverable. You know, if I don't say this, they won't know about it. There's nothing that nobody else to know about it, so I don't have to worry about it. But then it comes out as marriage comes exactly. on, as the relationship gets deeper, it starts coming out mm -hmm. in certain things that we do. Mm -hmm. You know, don't 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 lie to yourself. You know, sometimes what you need to hear somebody who has no has no nickel in that dime mm -hmm. to be able to talk to you about things that you dare not to ask one another because yeah. sometimes we're yeah. just excited about marriage yeah. and too afraid if we say some certain things we're gonna yeah. lose that person. Exactly. If you're too afraid to be be honest with the person that you're in, then that's a bad relationship from the get go. And if you're sitting down talking with them and then you have to argue your points and it gets into an argument or there's certain areas that you can't go into without getting a rise out mm. of them. You better take a step back. Absolutely. Because Absolutely. you don't want to open that Pandora's box because you don't know what you're going to find behind there. Absolutely. All right, huh? Okay. Um, who is actually who is actually connected to the truth that you want to live and that you preach or that you just connected to as a social level that at first you felt needed to needed no rule needed no rules or definition. Now the the thing I want to bring out here is is, okay. is this we need to find out. Uh, uh, as time goes on and as relationships gets to a season, um, that uh, that it should take on some definition. Yes. That we need to find out. Okay, what part is this person playing in my life? But the only problem is sometimes is that at the beginning of a relationship, when we're just happy to be in a relationship, we don't we don't set any rules, and we let the relationship develop with no rules or, or real expectations. We don't ask any real questions to find out what that person is. So then what we do as the relationship goes on, we realize that, wait a minute, this relationship is feeling a little bit different. This relationship is feeling a little bit different and stuff. And, uh, and, and, and if it's feeling different, I need to find out where it's, where it's coming from. And if the person I'm feeling a little bit differently about the relationship, and I'm talking positively, mm -hmm. if the person I'm feeling a little bit differently towards, if they're in, on board with this. Yeah. If this is, if there's, and if, if this it's is a, real. Absolutely. Because there are sometimes people that start talking to you. Uh, mainly talking to singles now, mm -hmm. they'll start talking to you as if you're heading towards marriage. Because when we get married, you know, this here is such as we can't have it like this here. And then all of a sudden, you'll put down your guard. And that's only and friend talk begin, now. Yeah, but you'll begin to relax and think, oh man, this is a real relationship. Because he's talking about, you know, if we get married and this and it, he hasn't proposed to no. you. No. He has not gone proposed to you. Mm -mm. He talked about if we get married this and we get married that and when we get married, you know. We need to. You need to stop right Absolutely. there and roll it back and say, "Okay, what are you saying?" Because if you do not, and feelings, things, as we will say in, in a minute, you start going ahead with your feelings, and, and stuff start crossing emotional lines. And you start feeling stuff and stuff. Now you realize, wait a minute, I, I gotta start. I gotta start yeah. bring. I gotta start setting some rules yeah. because if I don't. I'll be set out here I'll not knowing what's altar. going on. Yeah, I'll be at the altar, and they still be at, they still be somewhere. Somewhere not even promising a lie. <laughs> promise, promise a lie. But see, what we sometimes do is because we're so excited about relationship, and we forget that sometimes friends, girls, boys, and girls, who, mm -hmm. and some who haven't come into, or just they haven't come, they haven't come out of companionship or friendship mode, will talk girl talk. You're not girls when they get together, and I don't mean this just, and boys do too. But I'm just saying, you know, when girls will sit around and say, "Man." I would say, huh? When I get married, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I, you know, I, I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just so be so excited. And you think you're talking about you? But I'm talking, no, two girls, now two, women just oh, talking. I think no, no, okay. no. But yeah, yeah, that happens when it's, when someone doesn't come out the friendship mode and there's a rule set. Mm -hmm. But girls get together and talk. Man, when I get married, but we ain't gonna stop hanging out together. But when when we get when, when I get married and stuff, you know, I'm I'm such such that's gonna happen and so on and so on and stuff. You make plans about that and everything, but you're not talking to each other. You're talking about things that you're gonna do. Sometimes when when, when uh, connections 
don't come out the friendship mode. They have this girl kind of talk. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying somebody, I'm not talking about a gay stuff. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that. I'm saying they have that kind of flavor talk where they're talking about things that almost sound like they're talking about you being involved, mm -hmm. but they're actually not. They're just having girl talk. Mm -hmm. They're just having, or, or just locker room talk. They're talking about things they want to do, but it may not involve you. Mm -hmm. But because there's those rules being set, they don't know they need to make themselves clear about what they're talking about and if they're implying something. Mm -hmm. And because you've been so at ease with it, you let your feelings get involved before you know it. You don't come out the friendship mood, but they're still there. Mm -hmm. And now you realize, if I don't stop this and find out where it's going, we gonna have I'm going to have some problems mm -hmm. and stuff. So now you have to decide, how can I bring about some rules that I don't offend if this is a friendship, them right. being a friend? And that's a problem where it comes sometimes. Okay. Not knowing this or acknowledging this can have you feeling past line and trying to open doors that are off limits, created in an unspoken position of I'm comfortable with how I met you. Now here's here's the here's the thing that uh, I want us to understand. We got the, we got the word feeling mm -hmm. emphasized, and the reason why we got that emphasized is is because if you don't acknowledge that something has changed about this, even if it's just in you, even if it's how, you, even if it's just how you're now listening to this person, mm -hmm. your feelings will start to cross lines, mm -hmm. and you'll start to feel things and try to open doors that's over the line. Mm -hmm. And then the sad thing about it is that you won't recognize how much over the line you do you, you have gone until they say something that embarrasses you emotionally yeah. and makes you feel bad. Yeah. So that's why it's important to evaluate all relationships. Yeah. That when someone becomes a dependent, in, emotionally dependent in your life, that you understand where this can go and you start to deal with it mm -hmm. so it won't go somewhere where both of you will be destroyed. Exactly. Amen. Okay. And it's okay to say, hold up a minute. I'm not there with you. Uh, or hold up a minute. I don't think that, you know, I want to be going in that direction with you. I don't think we should be talking like that or, right now. Or I'm or, hearing things yes. and it's making my feelings feel so yeah. because it's not just the onus on the person that may be giving, the, uh, giving maybe giving a mixed message. Mm -hmm. It's also the onus is on the person who may be hearing a mixed message. message. Okay. And when they do that, both can... So it's good to stop when you're hearing and say, wait a minute, am I hearing right? Right. Are you literally saying that you think we are heading in the area right. of a bona fide relationship. Absolutely. And I need you to, you know, commit more than just uh, hinting at it. Absolutely. You know, I need you to say that and I need to know and feel that and understand that it's real. Absolutely. So I don't be a hundred miles up the road and you just Absolutely. start to, you know, race. Well, and also, Pastor, uh, I'm going to say this quickly. This also applies for, to marriages. Yes. When you're conversing, when you're having a conversation and you're dealing with some things, be plain. Don't just, don't just conclude or assume that they mean something when they haven't made it clear about what what's what's being said. If you have to assume something, it's not clear enough. Mm -hmm. Be willing to be willing and be honest and open enough to say, "Oh, wait a minute. I want to make sure that I'm hearing what you say, so that when I when we get to a place that it needs to unfold, you won't say I didn't I didn't say I didn't really say that and stuff. And find out, okay, what are you actually saying? Because we want to be on the same page. Now, now, okay, that's good. But what about if you're married to a spouse that you can't ask that to? If they're saying something and you're not sure what page they're on. And we found that some spouses can't ask that question. Mm -hmm. But the sad you know, part about it and is... And it makes them frustrated. Well, why are you asking me that? Right. Because I need to understand and right. know what you're clear... Well, what are you trying to accuse me of? I'm not trying to accuse you of anything. I'm right. just trying to be clear about where you are in this. That's all the more why you don't assume. Mm -hmm. Because if you can't ask them nothing, when you're unclear and you, and you assume something, they're certainly going to be frustrated because they're go, they're going to go back on the on you know on the argument. Well, I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, while we're discussing this, and you may get upset, the other person don't want, doesn't want to answer. But you know, I'm going to say something, please don't miss it. I don't care about you being upset. I I would rather for you be upset, me trying to get clarity, than you being upset and walking away from me when I assume something that you claim you did not say. And then you get upset when I go off of my assumption. Right, absolutely. So sometimes get upset, grow up, because if you're going to make this relationship beneficial and we're going to be healthy and end up on the same page, when I'm not sure about what you're saying, and some of it can be proven by history, if there are things I thought you were saying that when we got to the place that I thought it should have been done, when I asked you about it, you tell me that's not what you said, but some evidence showed that that's what you were pointing to, teach me I can't assume. So that when we're discussing something that needs to be done or making a plan, I need to find out clearly. I need to find out clearly 
what are you saying? Mm -hmm. And so that when we get there and what is desired and expected can be on the same page. Yes. So that's it. it they, again, they may get upset, but they'll realize if I want a peaceful exchange, let me be clear about what I'm saying because my spouse is not going to assume it because so many times I backed out what they thought I was saying, even if I was just implying it, even if it was just an implication, but you, you were pointing to it. Okay? All right, huh? It will always turn out to be an absolute physical, emotional, and spiritual tragedy when you ignore the disposition of an emotional hitchhiker and expect them to go further than they have made up in their life to go. Absolutely. We was alluding to it earlier. Mm -hmm. When you connect with somebody that's just an emotional hitchhiker, emotional hitchhikers look for, and this is a key, this is a, a point that singles need to look to. Emotional hitchhikers look for people who are emotional. They love the idea of being uh, a care, loved, rather. They love the idea of being in a relationship. They love the idea of someone being in their life that not uh, may not may not have what's needed to go further than the ride that's being taken, but at least look like they're going somewhere. If they say they're going south, I'm going south. They may not go as far south as you are, but at least they're going south. And maybe during the ride, as I, you know, where they would drop off at, at us going south, they may decide I want to go a little bit further. Mm -hmm. But you can't decide. You can't trust. The dis disposition of a motion hitchhiker because they've made up in a life, and a life history will show that they're only going to go as far as their life has been made up to go. Amen? Okay. Their life is geared to catch an emotional ride with an emotional driver to go as far as they want to experience their next at no next and no further. Absolutely. Motion hitchhikers, they, they, they have made up in their mind to go as far as, their, as they meet their next experience and no further. And to ask them, uh, okay, Grina, because that's. And says, to ask or expect someone like that who is emotionally unreliable, disconnected, and inconsistent in anything that defines them outside of an emotional hitchhiker, to live up to an expectation will cost too much and present too many distractions and obstacles to what God desires to do in your life. Now, key, key thing, Pastor Flowers, and this is again mostly to singles, um, when you get a hold of, how will you know an emotional hitchhiker? They don't see beyond the moment. Mm -hmm. they, they never see beyond the moment. They see they 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 live by a motto: live for the day, because mm -hmm. you don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. And it's all about them. It's all about them. Because they give nothing. Absolutely. And you're not gonna draw you're not gonna draw them to any emotional responsibility mm -hmm. for any relationship that you want to develop, because they've already made up in their life in their life and in their mind and in their heart that they're only going to go so far. So they're a traveling companion. That's it. They're just a traveling companion. Mm -hmm. And you, like you were saying in, in a message that we pulled it from is they're not going to they're not gonna pay any tolls. Mm -hmm. They're not going to stand for any challenges. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to take any responsibility for anything they may have applied or anything that you may have pulled from, anything they may give you. They're good conversation piece. You're going to hear her say this again. They're, good, they're a good conversation piece. They'll say the things that you've always wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. They'll say the things that you need to hear. But you can rest assured. Whatever you get from what they said, you'll never get it in reality. You'll never be able to pull from them anything they may have implied or promised in a conversation while they were taking a ride with you. Amen? Okay. All right. Um, Uh-oh. Well, Proverbs, okay. no, okay. no, no, Proverbs 25 and 19, it says, Confidence in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. Well, we know how that feel. Wow. If, we put a, if you put a confidence in an emotional hitchhiker or someone... That has proven to show that they are only going to go so far. They are they are, they are they're, they're not in it for the long haul. They're not in it for the they'll long haul. They'll pretend like they're in it for the long mm -hmm. haul. They'll try to convince you it like they're in it for the long haul. They'll try to convince you that they're going to do their part. But when you pull up to that gas tank, all of a sudden they left the <laughs> wallet home. Yes. Well, I can't find my wallet. Oh man. Yes, 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 yes. Because they they, don't, uh, they didn't come they're, prepared now. to go where it takes to cost something. Mm -hmm. They only go as far as it takes to where they can get away. We're not not paying or not taking any responsibility or not investing in, in, into anything. Amen. Anyway, let's do this last one, honey. We can go ahead and close. Those that are either too distracted to be faithful to the connection they claim to have with you, claim to have with you, or aren't truly into your into you as you are into them. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And for this, they will end up hurting you, hurting your trust, your feelings, and wasting your time. Chasing now, listen to this chasing after fruit from the good conversation that the emotional hitchhiker can present for the length of the desired uh, distance, only to be highly disappointed and hurt. Now, here's the thing: remember, we was talking about the uh, uh, the conversation that hitchh emotional hitchhikers can give. They can talk a good talk, 
They can talk to you like they understand all about what's desired, what's needed, and what's necessary mm -hmm. in a relationship. And they can understand your point of view of what you expect from a relationship. But I can, after that ride is over, after the distance they desire to go, you're not going to get none of that. Mm -hmm. They're only going to get, listen, they're only going to give what's necessary to keep their ride going. Mm -hmm. And I say this to any, all, all singles out there. Let me show you, tell you something, especially to the saved ones. If you find a man that don't mind having sex with you before marriage, and him also, especially if he say, if he don't mind having sex before for marriage, then he don't mind spoiling any gift that you would get that, that would come into his life. If he doesn't respect the gift that God brings towards him to honor into a place that God is acceptable for y'all doing to do that and stuff, you can rest assured he's not going to respect you the rest of the way. Look, you, whether woman or man, you have the right to be respected for the expectations that God has in your life. Exactly. Not just the ones that a, that a relationship has, but the ones that God has for your life. Honor yourself, honor yourself better than to allow yes, a person absolutely. who has an emotional hitchhiker mentality or disposition to come into your life. Because if they're not going for the long haul, you're always going to be chasing something from them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people end up getting married to emotional hitchhikers. Yeah, they do. Then they get in a get marriage, get in a home, and find themselves lonely and by themselves in the house. That's because it. the person they're married to, their emotional hitchhiker. They got what they want. That's it. There was a bow eagle. They wanted to go to Georgetown. And stuff. They caught a ride to jo they caught a ride to Georgetown. You, you want to go to Mills. You gave it to them. You want to keep on going to go to go to Millsboro. Well, you end up marrying them between Millsboro and Georgetown. They settled back into Georgetown. Oh, yeah. Now you're trying to get talk to them into going to Millsboro. They didn't want to go to Millsboro. Mm -hmm. They showed you they didn't want to go to Millsboro. They and told you the only place to go. Yes. They'll tell you what their actions. Absolutely. I gave you what I could give you and now you're asking for more and I'm not giving you any more. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Amen. What is uh you guys was you gonna say something? Mm -hmm. Yes, she was. Listen, we're going to get ready to end. Our time is up. Uh, you know, you know I, I hope we said something. I, this was, a, I believe, from my heart, that this was a serious part, especially for this season. Uh, um, teaching, knowing where you are. Knowing where you are. Knowing where they are. Knowing where they are. Knowing who you got in your life. Mm -hmm. and, and being honest. Y'all, don't just, don't, just, don't just go off of connection and definition of what something should be. Find out if it's there. Find out if that husband and that wife is being what they need to be to each other by sitting down and talking. Find if that potential is really working to be the, be what that potential uh, uh, points to. If you are a potential husband, see if he's working to be there. If you're a potential wife, see if she's working to be there and stuff. And not just take it for granted. Be on the same page. Absolutely. It'll save your heart. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, we thank you. Thank you for joining us. Hopefully we said something that was encouraging to you. Hopefully we said something that you can use in your everyday life, especially when you develop a relationship, because they're important. The worst thing you can be is be a casualty of relationships. Yes, indeed. That's the worst thing you can be, especially when, especially when God's approval is on relationships, mm -hmm. and especially on marriage. When you get emotional with people, it's everything you got almost, you know, yes. and it hurts. Absolutely. It hurts to realize you were deceived. It hurts to realize you were disrespected. It Absolutely. hurts to realize that, you know, you put more in a relationship and you thought a relationship was deeper and going in a, you know, a, 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 a direction other than what it, other than what it was going into. Absolutely. Now, before we go, um, Pastor Flower said earlier, she said... Um, it was I, so I, nice to see everybody tonight. No, Thank you no. so much for joining in. No, really, no. really, really. No, people want to see you do it. this. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Both my grandsons joined in. Yes. I'm Why are you coming up? I'm just so happy. Okay. But look, oh, you're happy, right? Yeah. You say you can love somebody so much so that you, 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 you can cry. Now, I'll tell you what, what I want you to do is demonstrate that. Right after you cry, I'm going to cry. Y'all pray for me. <laughs> hey, listen, God bless you. We thank you again for, for joining us. We thank God for everyone who, did, who joined us. Keep us in your prayers. We just we just thank God for the, some exciting things that he's going to do with our program here. Because, we're again, we're not here just because we're trying to spend time. We're here because this is what God has put in our hands to do for this time. And we thank God for you joining us. God bless you. Uh, amen. Amen. Uh, we thank you. Thank God uh, for you again. So, listen, keep us in your prayers. Um, we're here live on Facebook every second and fourth uh, Sunday. I'm the second uh, fourth Tuesday. Tuesday. Jesus, <laughs> Ooh, every second and fourth Tuesday, uh, you'll see on our on our announcement about the broadcast on the night um, when our next pro program is. Mm -hmm. So it's two weeks from now and starting in, in November. Share, share, share the message on tonight. Please do, please do, and stuff. Again, if you want to ask us any questions, we're going to go off though. But if you want to ask us any questions, please drop us an inbox. And stuff. We'll get back with you as soon as possible. Again, thank you. Uh, all right, Trudy. Good to see you. Good to see all of you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you joining us and stuff. And God bless you. We'll see you again on the next broadcast. What, what was the next program? What do we call a program or broadcast? Huh? Live program. Live program. Yeah. 
I'm going to even say it there for tomorrow. See you on the next Facebook Live. Okay, tell me you love me. I love you. Say it real loud so they can hear you. Say it real loud. You. <laughs> okay, God bless God you. God bless you.